Shall we try that again? Shall we try that again? Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what my phone was doing. It, it turned, it turned up right. So let's start that again. Thank you for rejoining. Thank you for catching up on replay. Um, thanks, guys, for hopping back onto this second, <laughs> this second live stream. Um, yeah, as I was saying, ten weeks ago, I just thought had the, had the mindset of just showing up and. Um, and sharing some awesome people, being curious, and, and then enjoying it along the way. And um, number ten, number ten tonight. I've really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. I've absolutely loved it, and I and I hope that we've shared some value along the way. Um, so this is, if this is your first ever one that you're watching, drop me a red love heart emoji in the comments. I'd love to know my first time listeners, um, and I'd love to get involved in a conversation and have a chat. Likewise, if you are a a regular viewer of the Always Better Than Yesterday th sessions. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Drop me a, a blue love heart emoji in the comments just so I can uh, give you a good fist bump when I uh, when I get off the live stream. So tonight, episode 10. Um, I don't know whether people noticed, but my first few live sessions were a bit male heavy. So we went um, straight out the bat with about six men back to back. And I didn't that was not intentional. That's just how the calendar rolled um, and the availability of some people. But yeah, six, six men. And we are doing it for the women right now. So the last three uh, have been awesome, awesome women. And the next three are going to be awesome, awesome powerhouse women as well. So I'm super, super excited for, for this evening. Um, I've recently connected with, with Helen in the, in the last couple of months through another um another community and I'm absolutely um, fascinated is probably not the word I, I really like her approach really like her style and um, I've been following her for a little while I like what she's been doing um, I'm in one of her communities as well which has been really really great to be part of um, and I'm looking forward to sharing her uh, with yourselves but more more selfishly for me I mean I'm, I'm looking forward to asking her some questions because I'm nosy like that so Seven people are on. Hope that we're doing well. And I am going to bring the awesome leadership and business coach, Helen Packham, on. Hello. Hi, how are you? I am good. I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Okay, you're a little bit quiet. Let me just... Oh, it's okay. I can turn you up. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Woof. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Have you had a good weekend? I've had a wonderful weekend, thank you. I've spent the weekend in this lovely hotel um, and Amazing. I've been doing a bit of work. I've been meeting up with some people and this is a great way to end my weekend. So I'm really excited to talk to you and and uh, and uh, thank you to everybody who's, who's joining. Amazing. So just you're in the hotel lobby, are you at the moment? I'm actually, they've given me a room. <laughs> <laughs> which okay. is really nice there may be some people coming through but I was a bit cheeky because I held my conference here uh last month yeah. Yeah. I was kind of like do you mind they were like no so we're friends it's cool <laughs> absolutely so you're gonna get a few funny looks as, uh, as people walk through there. what Ebs? it's cool <laughs> <laughs> amazing so would you do me the honor of introducing your good self to the, the watchers please? yeah sure so uh hey everybody uh my name is helen packham and i'm a leadership and business coach and really in a nutshell i help um, entrepreneurs to stand out as leaders in their field uh, mainly through the power of using their stories um, because there's a big link with leadership and storytelling from my corporate days, which I'm sure we will go into. Um, and I really help them to use their stories to stand out, get recognized as experts, win more business. Win, winning more business is the ultimate goal. Amazing. And I, um, I saw your post earlier on today, I think it was, um, around why stories you know, have got you fascinated and gripped when you first started it. Virgin Atlantic. So do you mind sharing that story with us? Yeah, so um, I was lucky that my first job out of uh, Virgin Atlantic, out of school, uh, A-levels, was at Virgin Atlantic Airways uh, in the call centre. Um, and um, it was awesome. And I quickly found my calling because um, Richard Branson was heavily into coaching at that time. And at that time, it was kind of relatively new within organizations. People didn't um, know really what it was, but he was, of course, forward thinking. And uh, one of the first 
corporate do's I ever went to, I was invited to his house in Oxford, um, along with everybody else who was employed uh, within the organisation. And we got to go to a big party all weekend and we got to wow. camp in his field and they put on a big concert and the man himself came out. And by that time, I'd been drinking um, was it hooch all day or whatever it was two dogs you know back then like it's 1999 <laughs> yeah, yeah the alcoholic lemonade and I was um, very drunk and he came onto the stage and he started talking and he started telling a story and that was the first thing that he did and from that moment I was just entranced and it wasn't just that it was Richard Branson it was the way that he was t- t- delivering a message via a story mm. and that really stuck with me from there throughout my career and I remember he, he said um, at the end of that that talk, if your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. And, and that was something wow. that just stayed with me. Um, and, and that really kind of shaped my career. Um, it really kind of helped me to get into coaching and learning and development and then later into leadership development. Um, so, um, yeah, that was that was a great, great start to my journey. That's amazing. So um, I don't want to jump around too much. I don't want to get too ahead of but you. You talk a lot about your story and your journey at, um, in your TEDx talk. And I guess for those of the, us that, well, for those of the, 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 the viewers that don't really know what a TEDx talk, could you explain a little bit about what it yeah, is? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, TEDx talks are a derivative of TED. Um, TED stands for Technology Entertainment Design, and it is um, a, a global organization um, that um, is all about ideas worth spreading and the way that those ideas are spread are through talks or through delivering talks and um, these are high ticket events so you're talking about 10 grand a ticket to go to a TED wow. event but you've got the most pre- prestigious speakers at those events Richard Branson, Elon Musk, people like that um, talk at TED events and so Ted wanted to make it more accessible for, um, you know, the public. And so that's where TEDx came from. And TEDx are independently organized TED events. So they are global as well. Uh, they are independently organized, but they are all linked to the main organization. There are obviously criteria to follow and things like that to varying degrees. Um, and um, it's much more accessible. So you've got normal people, everyday people, which is the beauty of it sharing their stories their ideas and their messages in a way that they can spread that globally online but also to people who come at much more affordable prices so you're looking about 40 pounds a ticket for tedx events Mm -hmm. and how long did it take you to decide on your um the 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 theme or the the title of your talk (laughs) well uh that's a funny story because i had literally a few hours to do that (laughs) yeah So, um, shall I tell you the story of how the, the talk happened? Please, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, to do that, I guess I need to give a little bit of backstory, which is, um, you know, I had this, I had this high flying career within corporate. I climbed up the corporate ladder, um, and um, you know, started to train and coach more senior leaders. So by the time I went on maternity leave, I was training and coaching executive directors um, within uh, financial services organisations, and I loved it. But then I went off on maternity leave. I had my daughter and I completely lost the plot. <laughs> Literally lost the plot. My daughter had health issues. Yeah. I, I didn't sleep. I got di- diagnosed with anxiety disorder. So when I came back into the, mm. the corporate world, I felt like I didn't belong. Um, and uh, I felt like it had all changed. People had raced like far ahead of me. I lost all of my knowledge and I didn't deserve to be there anymore. So I ran away from that. Um, and basically hid for four years. Um, I went into kind of hiding. I was very anxious. I was a shell of my former self. And I vowed that I'd never, ever stand up in front of a room full of people again, because the thought of that made me physically sick. And actually, it, it, you know, it did make me sick. Um, and so the, the, thought of, the thought of that was just like, no way. Um, fast forward a few years and some life events happened. I had a son. Um, and um, I, was, I, was, I was kind of forced to look at what had happened to me and why it had happened, or why there'd been such, such a contrast in going from feeling very confident in standing up in front of a room for people, confident in myself, knowing who I was, to absolutely having no idea at all uh, who I was, what I wanted out of life, and why I you know, felt so anxious. Um, so that was the beginning of a journey. 
um, that I'm really glad I'm still on that journey. But that started about two and a half years ago now. And one of the first things that I did on this journey was rediscover who I was. But the second thing that I did was put, to put together a vision board of all the things that I wanted to achieve. And in the middle of that was Ted. Because, so why, go on. Why did you, um, no, I love, I love the idea of vision board. And my, my wife, um, she does, she's got her own business and is very, is very um, it, almost as a vision board quite frequently. And they're really powerful, really powerful things. But I guess, um, why did you do that? Where did mm. that inspiration come from to do a vision board? So that's actually a really significant part of my journey. The first thing that I had to do was believe that I was worthy and um, that I was capable of all the things that I used to be. That was the first part of the journey. And I had, to, I had to do that. I had to get that back again. I had to kind of unlock it and discover that it was all still in there and I was capable. Yeah. The next thing that I had to do was dream. I had to actually start to visualize what was possible and what was possible that I hadn't thought possible ever before. And that was a really, really key part. And a vision board, of course, is a big part of that because, um, you know, you, you, it's visual. It's there in front of you every day. And um, I'm kind of the, yes, in terms of the law of attraction, but very much from a scientific perspective with the old reticular activating system that thoughts become things, mm -hmm. what we focus on we can achieve and so having a vision board in front of you as a daily reminder of all the things that you want can help to make it happen if you take action yeah. which of course is the third part um yeah but that's why i put it together i wanted i think i hired a, i think it was my first coach that i hired to help me launch this business um, and she was like yeah. you've got to put one together so that i did and there was lots of things on there but in the middle the biggest thing i was like What's the, what is the biggest goal I can set myself? The scariest goal that's going to prove it is all in there and then some. And so it was yeah. Ted. Amazing. So the call comes. Mm. Well, I found out <coughs> three months before the Brighton event, which was held at the Brighton Dome, and it's a big TEDx event. So they're, they're varying in size, but this one's quite a big one. So normally about 100 mm -hmm. seats. This is 15, 1,500 seats, Brighton Dome. Um, I wow. saw that it was uh, the theme was we can be heroes, how we use our stories to help society. And I was like, I've got a message here. I've got a message. I want to help um, mums <laughs> in particular know that mm. everything they have is still inside them. They haven't lost that in motherhood. I want to spread that message. Yeah. I want to share that message. And I want to do that through Ted. So I contacted them. It took a lot to get in touch with the right people. Sorry about the noise. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, I had to jump through a lot of hoops and I got told, no, we're full, um, you know, maybe come back next year. And I was like, mm, okay, a little bit disappointed, but, you know, and then I forgot about it. I literally did forget yeah. about it until three days before the event um, when I got a call from the curator saying, somebody's pregnant and can't fly. So we've got a gap, but we need to put it to a committee vote, but we want you to, well, I want you to do it, but I, I've got to put it to a committee vote. So I had to wait 24 hours without a word from, from the curator. And then I had to chase him. Uh, and then he, he basically said to me, yes, you're in. And that day I had to go down for sound check. And I literally had a day to pull together a talk. Um, and, then, and then it happened. Wow. So before we, before we go into that, because I'm, I'm desperate to ask you questions about the, um, the, the TED talk itself, but... Let's, let's, I'm really interested in your, your mindset at this point. And, you know, they say that one of the, the number one fears that people have is of public speaking. And I guess, help me into your mindset just when you're kind of 24 hours away from one of the biggest talks of your life and you haven't probably planned it at this point. What are you thinking? What are you going to Well, think? it was almost, sorry about all of this noise in the background here. <laughs> just as they take the bottles out, yeah. Um, it was almost like because there was such a short amount of time, I didn't have time to feel the overwhelming feeling of anxiety that I would normally feel because this would be the first time that I'm standing up in pretty much four years in front of a group yeah. of people. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, so um, I almost it, it was almost like the the urgency um, was overriding in that I had I just didn't have time to think about it until the actual day um, itself <laughs> um, when and so you know I, 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 I'm practicing as quickly as I could pulling together a talk and practicing it as quickly as I could was um, mm. was all I could focus on getting childcare yeah. 
um, and, yeah. um, and then going down there. But the, the biggest thing that I found really scary was that I was second to last on and I had to be there all day. So I was sat in yeah. the audience watching these incredible speakers and I yeah. literally was drowning in fear. Like I was like full on, like I, I, was, I can't do this. I just can't do this. Um, mm. But it wasn't until like 15 minutes before the talk, I had to go backstage. I had to get the mics on. And there were three things that helped me get in the right mindset. Mm -hmm. The first was the power pose, Amy Cuddy's um, power pose, which if anybody hasn't yeah. heard of Amy Cuddy, please look her up. She's an awesome lady. She's got an incredible story. She's got a book called Presence. Um, and mm -hmm. she's got two amazing TED Talks all about this. And basically her theory is that her idea worth spreading is that we can trick we can trick our, 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 our bodies, the physiology of our bodies with our minds, um, and, um, and we can create that confidence. Um, and, mm. and, and that's what um, the power pose is. So I did my Wonder Woman power pose, which is the standing with your hands on the hips. You can also do this one, which is Superman as well. I think it's Superman or something like that. And I recited a power word. Uh, so you know, a power word, whatever power word gives you the most confidence. Mine was power, because all I could think about was Veronica Morningstone or Corningstone, I can't remember her name, from, from yeah. Anchorman. Before yeah. she went on, she goes, power, power, power. And that's all I could think about. So <laughs> nice. I was stood backstage with these sound guys going, power, 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 like that. <laughs> I could hear the person who talking on the stage who went before me, and she was killing it. She was smashing it. And I was so, so mm. nervous. The third thing that helped me was a sound guy. He came yeah. and he saw that I was just, and he said, look, here's some water. And he started talking to me about something completely inane, like nothing to do with like anything. Yeah. And he managed to just calm me down. Like it, he distracted me. And then literally he was like, you're on. And I had to down the cup of water and I had just had to walk out. Um, and, and I'd say those three things helped me walk out onto that stage in the spotlight and it just melted away. It really? just melted away. And the other thing that I guess that helped is I'd been visualizing. It, when I put it on my vision board, I hadn't been visualizing the three red letters. I'd been visualizing what it would feel like to stand on that stage after I'd given yeah. my talk and what the applause yeah. would feel like and what the lights would feel like. And it felt exactly like that and then some. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. So for those that haven't, uh, we'll, we'll put a link to it in the in the comments after. But for those that haven't seen it before, can you just share the the three life lessons? Yeah. So, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Wee, what are they? Um, so the first thing um, is, um, well, it's it's really, I guess, it's that kind of believe it, dream it, do it thing. Uh, so um, you, first of all, you've got to got to kind of believe that you're worthy of. Um, of 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 your dreams that's the first step um so by getting to know yourself again and by identifying who you are finding yourself in the things that you've you've got lost along the way is the first step um so that looks like getting clear on your values getting clear on your needs you know i didn't have a clue what my needs were i found it really difficult to identify what i needed and, and requesting that those things were met um what happened to you? sorry what helped you with that? Um, so the, one of the things that really helped me was kind of really digging into what do I need? What does that look like? And what does it give me? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I'm thinking about, you know, baseline, first of all, needs in day-to-day -day life. Well, for example, I need time alone. I didn't fit, realize mm -hmm. that idea, but actually I do. You know, mom, two kids, mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of stuff. I do actually need time alone, but I haven't been giving myself time alone. Um, mm. What does that, uh, you know, uh, what is it? What does it look like? Well, that looks like, you know, every few nights of the week, taking myself off, doing something on my own, maybe doing some exercise, maybe doing, um, having a bath, maybe like reading. What does it give me? It gives me a sense of peace. It gives me a sense of calm. So really digging into that rather than just saying, what do I need? That was really, really helpful. Um, to me um and um you know following that is kind of like come come back to, but come back home to yourself yeah. so knowing that because i have a history of anxiety and that's something that will never leave me it's just something that i can really manage now 
um, mm-hmm. knowing that your thoughts and your feelings are just that. They are just thoughts yeah. and feelings and they don't define you and they don't represent you and they aren't you. Understanding mm-hmm. that, and I know that you, you do lots of meditation, Ryan, don't you? So, you know, mm-hmm. that's, um, I see it on your stories, um, that that's yeah. something that obviously you're very familiar with. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the way that I described it in the talk, how it was do- described to me was an, an anchor at the bottom of the ocean mm-hmm. And your thoughts and feelings are a boat on the top of the water. Yeah. You are the anchor. You're always going to be solid. You're always going to be fixed. That's you. And then mm. the, uh, your emotions are what is in the boat. And sometimes it's stormy yeah. and sometimes it's calm. But you can observe those and you can let them pass like, like clouds yeah. in the sky. Um, that was a big, big lesson for me. Um, yeah. And, that, and that's the thing I'm kind of learning through my own meditation is is that I've always had that that brain that's 100 miles an hour in the future and sometimes I can create things that don't probably yet exist and 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 what I'm also learning is that in that heightened state of emotion is probably not a great time to be making serious decisions and I was going to ask you was there any was there ever a time in the 24 hours before that talk that you thought nope I don't want to do it yes <laughs> yeah and it's been in on your and it was on your vision board for however long before yeah. you know so in a logical sense of day, of course you wanted to do it. But in that moment, if you'd have listened to your, you know, your heightened sense of emotion or whatever, you would have, I don't want to do yeah. it. <laughs> Toys out the program. Complete freak out. Yeah, I can't do this. I'm not worthy. Why me? Absolutely. I'm not capable. All of those sorts of feelings, you know, that we yeah. all experience. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and it's useful to be able to identify that. And, and like you say, you know, separate the, the boat and the anchor and, and being able to observe it. And I think that's definitely something that meditation helps with, isn't it? Massively. For, for, me, for me personally. Yeah, yeah, massively. And another thing that I always say now, I've got a bit of a strap line, is that on the other side of fear lies fun. Um, mm. And it's just, you know, it's that line of fear that some, we just can't see past. But if we can, if we can, if we can move ourselves past that, there's so much there on the other side. It's not just fun. It, it's achievement. It's, you know, it's making a difference. It's making an impact. It's, you know, what I help people with is actually sharing their messages with the world and uh, moving themselves out of the way of their message so that they can deliver that and they can really change lives with their stories and their messages. Yeah. Why is storytelling important to you? Um, well, so a few reasons. Um, one, because of my career. Um, history so you know a lot of the time I was coaching and training leaders on making an impact engaging their staff connecting with their staff on a deeper level so that they stayed Mm -hmm. so that they performed so that they were retained so Mm -hmm. that you know they could um, develop their talent all of those sorts of things and storytelling was a really really great way to get them to do that because Mm -hmm. from a a geek perspective which I am a little bit of a geek um, I love evolutionary psychology and studying evolutionary psychology and you know, as human beings, we are hardwired for stories because this is how we evolved, um, connected within communities, um, sitting around campfires and telling stories. And um, it connected us together and it made us feel like, you know, we knew what our purpose was because that, back then we didn't know what, what the sun was. We didn't know all of these things. And so storytelling connected communities together and human beings together. And we've evolved to tell stories you know we've gone from yeah. campfires to coffee houses we still love telling stories to each other and storytelling is a very it's, to me it's the most powerful business tool as well as you know yeah. you know in life but in business it's the most powerful tool because particularly in the online world of marketing you, it's very easy to scroll but if someone tells a story yeah. it connects with you on a much deeper level um, when mm. someone tells a story offline through speaking, it, it connects with you on a much deeper level. You can relate to the message in that story and you can take that mm. story and you can do something with it. So that's why I'm so passionate about storytelling, um, because it's so, so powerful. And the best part of it, it's easy because you, you tell yeah. your own stories and, they, and they're unique yeah. to you. And that's all, you know, I'm, I'm really passionate about developing authentic leaders. And I think it's exactly what you've just said. It's your own story, isn't mm-hmm. it? Don't try and be something you think you need to be. Just be the best version of you. And so um, I'm interested, and I don't want to skip too far forward, but um, you talk about um, being a leadership business coach and helping people stand out in their field and, and tell their story. 
um, what are some of the ways in which you help people tell their own stories? Mm. So um, there's, a, there's a few ways I do that. Um, the, the first way is through my one-to-one coaching, and that's quite yeah. business orientated. So um, it's really helping um, somebody who runs their own business to come out from behind their brand and mm-hmm. to show up. Um, I call it as a 360 leader. So it's very much about being an authentic leader. Um, and um, tapping into what that means for you, because again, people use that term a lot. Um, that's why mm-hmm. I call 360 leadership, because it's it's very much um, showing you as a kind of as a 360, um, and developing the stories that go along with that, and the messages yeah. that you have, and and the course that you know, every client I work with, we look at the leadership story, which is like your core story, um, and mm-hmm. it's it's the core story that's going to connect you with your audience in an authentic and genuine way Um, and of course there's all sorts of other stories because um, it's about establishing uh, you as an authority in what you do as a thought leader again that's a term that's very very widely used but thought leader to me is someone who's really standing out with their ideas who um, is Mm -hmm. is putting their unique stamp on existing ideas because no idea is really new and so I help Mm -hmm. my clients to do that through writing through speaking through um, online marketing um, and uh, through training through workshops through events anywhere where they are delivering um, a message to people um, to Mm. increase their reach their visibility their authority and credibility so they're standing out um, and and then you know bringing in the clients as a result of that so that's my one-to-one and then I run two two group programs one is a speed program revamped it I'm just launching a revamped version um, but the, the speaker program helps people to um, do exactly that become standout speakers no matter where they are if they're just starting out or they're further along um, they get to um, we've got identify- some connection troubles I don't know if you can still hear me I, I can ah, there we go yeah um, to to draw out their stories to draw out their messages and actually deliver them um, as a speaker so whether it be online by a Facebook live or whether it be standing on a TEDx stage, it, you know, it's, it, it really doesn't matter. It's the skills. The skills are the same. Um, and so that's, that's what that program does. And then I've got a program called Standout Leader, um, which really helps uh, as a group people to hone their messages, their thought leadership, um, their authority, um, land gigs, land um, press, um, guest articles, you know, all those sorts of things um, as well. So those are the those are the main. I've got my membership community as well, which um, is uh, uh, it's called Standout All Stars, and we do all of that within the membership community. Yeah, and um, that's amazing. And you you talk in your TEDx talk about this one value that you discovered, and it was courage. Courage. Why is that word important to you? Well, throughout my career, even though I kind of climbed the ladder and I was quite ambitious. Um, I was always told that I wasn't ambitious enough and that I wasn't mm-hmm. putting my hand up enough and that I wasn't confident enough and that I wasn't courageous. So whenever I had 360 feedback or I had a performance review, that was always cited as a weakness. Like it was something that I needed to develop, that I wasn't confident enough in, you know, pursuing things. Um, and it was always a bit of a dirty word. And so I, I, I always associate, I, I haven't got courage. Courage is something that I don't have. And I remember doing a strength scope report, it's a psychometric tool. Mm-hmm. Courage was the shortest bar on the whole graph, right? So after I went through this, this sort of experience of running away and then coming back again, I remembered all of that. And I just thought, what's going to be my driving force? Like, what is going to be the thing that's going to make me really push forward and achieve things that I've never achieved before and courage was the shining Mm. word um and it still is you know to this day I'm always asking myself am I am I using my courage value there when I decided to put on a conference you know never done that before you know Mm. courage Mm. courage was you know if I make a mistake if it fails so what I'm going to learn you know I'm I'm going to do it anyway and I'm going to see what happens and um it's enabled me to achieve everything that I have so far um, and, and fingers crossed everything that is to come. Definitely. It's really interesting because I can relate to that so much because one of my biggest downfalls was I was a huge procrastinator. You know, I definitely had a procrastination monkey. And, and here I am with a business called Always Better Than Yesterday, you know, 
and and that to me was my kick up the arse. It was my call to action, as it were. And um, yeah, and it's did exactly the same thing, leading to great things for me. And yeah, so yeah, I've got a big smile on my face because of that. So courageous leaders. What what's a courageous leader? Uh, what is a courageous leader? Yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you imagine a courageous yeah. leader to be? A courageous leader is um, someone who is willing to be vulnerable and honest. Um, mm. and hold their hand up and make mistakes and be okay with that mm. and to say, I'm going to give it a go. I don't know what the outcome will be, but I'm going yeah. to give it a go anyway. And I know that great things can happen from that, from that type of that. mindset. Um, that's, that's really what a courageous leader is to me. Mm. I love that. So, um, yeah, share, share links to your groups and your communities because I think our... Uh, our listeners and our viewers will will benefit and value, you know, have, and hopefully add great value to that community too. It's not always about receiving; it's definitely about giving. Yeah, and, I'm all and, about you know. that. You know, I'm, I've just introduced some new stuff that enables because for me, that community is about shared leadership. You know, yes. I am not the leader of that community. Every, you know, everybody yeah. in that community has skills and talents um, and experience that they can contribute, and that's one of the reasons why I think I've, ena I've enabled for it to be engaged for as long as it has and, and grow in the way it has because I've always yeah. wanted people to get involved and share their expertise. Um, yeah, it's not just like always better than yesterday. It's, it's, you know, we're very li obviously like-minded in that respect. And um, yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. So on that note then, what does always better than yesterday mean to you? It's interesting because... Um, I put that post up a few weeks ago about the Alice, the Alice in Wonderland quote. And okay. you shared that into your group. And it was, uh, I yeah, did. it was yes. very much sort of saying that, you know, um, I, 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 I could talk to you about what I did this morning, but I was a different person then. And yeah. for me, being always better than yesterday is knowing that, you know, every day, <laughs> we're growing we're evolving mm. we're learning we're making mistakes and it's mm. a continuous journey but if we can we can actually see it one day at a time and that say if we're having a bad day which bad days happen all the time you know yeah. We, yeah. we can know that tomorrow is another opportunity um and that we can look back on yesterday and know that we've learned something you know we, we either win or we learn you know um, Absolutely. and um, that's what it means to me and I think it's incredibly powerful um, that you've got this community and this, this is your message mm -hmm. and it's a very very strong message and I think it's the basis of a fantastic TED talk oh, behave behave <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. It's wow. a strong, it's a strong message. And I think there's, um, it's not just about that for you. There's lots of things that you kind of bring in around it. Um, as well as the blue heart. I think that's so powerful. It really, really is. So you're, you're, you know, building great, great things, um, uh, with your community and your mission. And, um, it's coming through very, very clearly. That's very kind of you to say so. Thank you. And, how are some of the things what, what tell me a few things that you do then to help yourself be better than yesterday what sort of habits or have mm. you got that so um it does change actually um quite mm. a lot um at the moment journaling for me is the biggest thing um so um i I've, in my personal life more recently i've been through quite a lot of um, ups and downs and i found yeah. that um journaling really really helps me to just talk it through when I, when I used to journal a few years ago, I didn't really understand actually what journaling was about. And I kind of just used to mm -hmm. write down my thoughts. But now I actually have a conversation with myself. And, mm -hmm. and more recently, I'm actually having a conversation with my five-year-old self because, um, you know, a lot of the time our five-year-old selves are kind of running the show emotionally. And so if we can build a relationship with them, I have, to, mm -hmm. I have my fantastic coach, Katie Phillips, to thank for this. I've got to give her a shout out. Um, that um, actually we can give ourselves what we need and we can ask ourselves mm -hmm. what we need. So I've been doing that a lot um, and that really helps mm -hmm. me. I also find exercise, exercise massively helps me. Um, I'm a bit of a spin addict. I love spin. It really like helps me. I've got, I bought one off eBay and I, I've got it in my garage. Um, yeah, like <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. I don't use mine very often though. I, I love that. I do weights and, and spin, pumping dance music, and that sorts me right out. Um, and yeah. um, really taking the time 
to sit with my feelings um, and not distract um, from from my feelings um, helps me to get like real clarity and focus and ultimately gratitude. Um, whenever I yeah. feel I'm in, a, I'm in a pickle, I will go somewhere or sit down and think of all the things I'm grateful for. I did it the other day. I went up to um, a hill just outside Brighton. I sat on the top of the hill and I thought of about like 350 things uh, to be grateful for. And it just... Uh, it's amazing what you find when you look, isn't it? Yeah, so, so many things. Um, gratitude is the antidote to so many things. Um, and I'd say that those are the main things that I'm kind of practicing at the moment. Sorry, notification there. That are really helping mm -hmm. me to all, always yeah. be better than yesterday. Um, amazing. For sure. So, do you have a favourite TED talk Ooh. of all time? Oh, yes. What would my favourite be? I'd have to say it is Brene Brown's Power of Vulnerability. Uh, there are others, but that one in particular, I think, is very significant to my journey because learning about Brene and her studies in vulnerability and courage um, and, and, and things like that, um, enabled me to really tap into that for myself and understand what the importance of showing vulnerability uh, as, yeah. as a leader, um, as a friend, uh, as, a, as a colleague, um, as somebody who has a following, uh, you know, online. Um, vulnerability creates trust. And um, it, that was one of the key talks I've watched in recent years that, that really made their mark on me. Wow. What's yours? Love it. Um, Mine, quite that. There's no competition for me. the The one that changed my life was Simon Sinek. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, for, for one, you know that that TED talk. Um, you think, how does 16 minutes have the power to change your life when it's you know when you're watching a YouTube video? But for me, it wasn't about the talk. It's about what it sparked inside of me, and it's a you know it just changed the way I thought and the way I you know as a leader, the way I communicate, you know, all of those sorts of things, and then finding what I love to do, reflecting on my own mm. purpose has then led me to helping others find theirs. Mm. And it's taken me to Europe to, you know, to, to help a, a team find their why in the middle of kind of Bratislava and wow. you know, things like that, that you could just never, you never go, I want to go and coach in, in the network, you know, you, you can't even imagine it. And that's the power of just going with the flow and, and enjoying what you do. Yes. Um, and I would never have had those experiences if I hadn't watched that YouTube video. Oh, it's scary, isn't it, when you think about that's it? That's awesome. We, we, we wouldn't be sat here talking because I would never have pursued you know, so clearly with, with what I love and what to do. So that is, That's awesome. That's just awesome to hear. I love that too. I love the way he starts that talk. Very powerful. Um, yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Love it. I also like, I think it's, his name's Tim Urban. He tells one about procrastination. Ah, oh, I think I have seen Very, that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, one that uh, I really love, uh, I can't remember her surname. Uh, her name is Diana. Oh, she is 65 years old and she swam from Cuba to Florida. Um, wow. Yeah, without stopping. Uh, and it's an incredible story oh, and, and the messages that came out of that were absolutely incredible if I, I'll find it and I'll post it below so, yeah, so, yeah, that, so that you can see it but that was just awesome I mean there's so many there, there really are which is the beauty of it um, absolutely yeah I saw someone was so saying you got your sorry, I saw Hayley says Ryan for TED Talk yeah, Woo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where where are you going to be doing your your big TED talk then? Which country are you going to be doing it? In? What the next one? No, yeah, yeah. So the, not the TEDx, but a TED oh. talk. <laughs> Vision board hasn't stretched that far. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> about my next TEDx talk. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but not uh, not not necessarily a TED. I'll have to come up with some maybe groundbreaking research or you know a cool. groundbreaking idea that hasn't hasn't been thought of before. We shall see. We shall see. Never say never, but we shall see. Amazing. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure. Aww. I'm really grateful for you, um, your time, and to, to come and share your story with us. Is there anything else that you would like to you know? Life lessons? Anything? Anything else you um, would like to share with? The, the viewers i think um there might be some people watching thinking oh well, that's not me or um you know mm. that's not possible for me or why would i even you know think about doing something like this but 
if I if you if that's you, but it interests you and it intrigues you, I would say start where you're at. So if you want to start yeah. sharing your story or your message, start doing that on video to yourself. Um, you know, or go to a local meetup group um, and talk to those mm-hmm. people there. Or you know, within your local community, is there a way for you to start sort of practicing doing this type of thing? Or even online, you know, maybe it could be your first Facebook Live or what is a way that you can share your story um, with people in a way that it means that they can connect with you? And don't, it doesn't have to be as big as standing on a stage, you know. Um, start start yeah. where you're at, I'd say, is, is, um, is the best thing to do. That's amazing advice. And where can people check you out and, and follow more of your content, find more of your content? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, uh, Facebook, I post a lot of stuff on my personal profile, but uh, I also have the, my group, the Courageous Leaders Club, um, which you can join by searching on here. And um, I also have a website with a blog. I, I do quite a lot of stuff on my blog. So that's um, www.helenpackham.com. Um, I'm frequently writing stuff on there as well. Always adding value. Oh, wow. That's what it's all about, eh? Definitely. Definitely. And do you enjoy it? You love oh, what you do? Oh, gosh. Without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Never feels like work. That really comes through. I love it. And for you too. Definitely. Comes through as well. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a, a wonderful week. And you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll speak okay. soon. Bye. Take care, Helen. Bye. Bye. Cheers, guys, for watching. Bye.